，哇靠 ！ATR 飞机引擎冒烟降落，全员紧急疏散。Hello， 你好，我是 Frank， 你的飞行伙伴。最近有一则新闻报道是，纽西兰航空一架 ATR 72客机在纽西兰的首都威灵顿做了紧急降落。飞机与事件的细节，等一下会请一位曾经在台湾飞行过的资深 ATR 机长 m a k e n a n o d e l l 来跟你讲解。m e g n a 机长的 YouTube 频道 Fly with m e g n a 有很多关于 ATR 飞机的影片哦。要是英文对你来说没什么问题，就赶快到他的频道去看看吧。但要是带有欧洲口音的英文解说，或是 YouTube 的自动翻译字幕，让你看得有点吃力，或是黑人问号，没关系，我可以理解。那 m e g n a 机长让我以专业字幕的方式在这里跟你分享他的影片，那我们就一起来看看吧。这时候，请你赶快。按下赞、订阅、分享和开启小铃铛哦。好，这次事件发生在纽西兰首都威灵顿机场。威灵顿机场刚好也是我驾驶波音七三七有时候会飞到的。那让我来先快速跟你介绍一下这个机场。机场跑道是一条南北方向幺六和三四的跑道，跑道长度一千八百一十五公尺，宽度四十五公尺，标高四十一英尺，配有雷达。航管塔台、消防队、国际与国内航厦、导航设施有 ILS 仪器降落系统、VOR 全多项导航台等，算是纽西兰的第三大民用机场。对于飞行操作来说，机场特性是风大、乱流多。机场的东北、西边皆有山脉围绕，南边则是海。那这次事件里的纽西兰航空的 ATR 七十是用三次跑道降落。好。剩下的，我们来看看梅拿机长的专业解说吧。Whoa! Holy cow! Smoking! Oh my goodness! Whoa! Hello, aviators. How are you today? My name is Mung Nan Udal. I'm an ATA captain and instructor. Yesterday. On the 1st of September 2024, an ATA 72600 from Air New Zealand, operating Flight 5366 from Christchurch to Wellington in New Zealand, was on short final when the left engine started to emit smoke. The aircraft landed safely, and passengers and crew evacuated. Why did this happen? I see three possible scenarios, and I will discuss them. I will also explain what we pilots are trained to do when we have an engine fire. First, let us see the video in full before I discuss the incident. A big shout out to Kevin in Wellington Flights Live. He streams aircraft movements at Wellington and Auckland airports. Please check out his channel. Now we take a look at the video. Oh, wow! Look at that、uh, ATR. You see the aircraft coming in. A quite gusty winds, and everything looks normal until now. You see black smoke emitting, and it becomes light grey. Whoa! Holy cow! The aircraft、hell. is coming down、Smoking. and touches down, and、oh、they will apply full braking and reverse, and the smoke、Whoa. disappears. It's crazy. They come to a full stop. Oh my goodness! And the procedure now is to apply the parking brake、wow. and shut on the engines. Never seen that before. They're feathered. And as they shut down, the smoke reappears. Oh my goodness! Look at it. If,、uh, just Propellers are stopped, and here comes the here come the fire trucks. They responded very quickly, and the smoke disappears. 
and that means the fire trucks will not uh, spray the aircraft with foam they will just evaluate the situation wow the flight crew will now be in contact so with the fire and rescue different. department over radio and they will uh, observe the aircraft there yeah, are some the small puffs of smoke coming yeah, out behind the engine and they will report to the pilots uh, what's going on the pilots will also communicate to the cabin crew and now they have to decide should we uh, evacuate or not they are running through the checklist engine fire on ground and then if evacuation necessary they will uh, do the evacuation checklist and while this is happening it's a bit stressful to be a passenger because you don't know what is happening now and you saw the fire and you want to run out of the aircraft as quick as possible but it's important that we have time to assess the situation right now there is no visible smoke right in this case the crew decided to evacuate i will uh, talk about it a little later and under the belly of the aircraft you will soon see the main door open yeah. continuing to film because i'm sure the uh, safety of the people on board is it's fine, it's just a um, yeah, mechanical issue, I guess. The main door is uh, on the left side, after the cabin. There it is. Now the door is open and the passenger can start to evacuate. They also made order to evacuation, so now the emergency exits are open. And the forward part, you see the they are thrown out, and the passengers start to disembark. It's one and a half meter from the exit to the ground, so some passengers are a bit uh, anxious about jumping out. Uh, but they seems to be young and fit. Mm, you should not bring your bags. You should not do that, but okay. Wow. okay. I understand people like want to bring the, really? um, the bags with them, but uh, uh, this is not the right time. Sydney, so because uh, as you see, it takes up. they slow you down. Uh, and uh, is she? we also see people apparently moving towards yes, the, the off, uh, propeller uh, of the, the engine the that was on fire. That is also not correct, so but it's hard to say this is a telephoto lens, so we don't see exactly how close yeah, they are to the engine. But we also see many people moving to the edge of the runway, which is good. Uh, I will stop the video here. According to one of the passengers, Lucy McLeod, she saw flames and smoke from the engine. She thought it was 20 or 30 seconds between she first saw the flames until the plane was on the ground. As soon as we landed, it felt like the pilot switched the engines off and switched the lights off. Yes, the lights will go off when you stop the engines because the generators stop uh, producing power. So you're left with uh, battery power and that means less uh, lights in the cabin. The flames went away straight away, but big billowing black smoke replaced the flames. The pilot told the crew to go to the stations. That's the procedure we use. We make a call on the PA. And the two flight attendants went to the front and rear exits, McLeod said. Some people had started to stand up and the flight attendants had asked them to sit down. That is correct procedure by the cabin attendants. Then, a very short time later, the pilot came over the intercom saying evacuate, evacuate. That's also a correct procedure. By that time, smoke could be seen and smelt in the plane, McLeod said. It was a light grey, but you could see it creeping in. 
In a situation like this, many people will lose the perception of time and they will also not notice every detail. But uh, her observations are very detailed and I find them very reliable. So what could cause this to happen? As I said, I think there might be one of three scenarios. The first is external fuel fire. And with external, I mean it's outside the engine itself, but inside the nacelle. And this is caused by a fuel leak for any reason. It's quite hot inside the nacelle, so the fuel will vaporize very easily. And uh, the vapor can then catch fire. Uh, there can also be an external oil leak that can also catch fire, just like the fuel. And third option, internal oil leak. There could be a mechanical failure resulting in a damaged seal and that could allow the oil to go into the engine compressor. And just like you have a failed head gasket in a car engine, then the engine will uh, produce a lot of smoke. Uh, the air conditioning system takes air from the compressor because uh, the air conditioning system uh, supplies pressurized air into the cabin and this allows the cabin to be pressurized in flight. So when the passenger said there was some light smoke in the cabin, it might come from the compressor and that might be the reason why they evacuated the aircraft this way. But there could be another reason. We don't know yet, we have to let the investigators do the job. Um, the engine fire detection system consists of two heat sensitive elements called loops. They install in parallel in the engine compartment. And both loops sense a temperature above, I think it's about 250 degrees or so. The fire warning is triggered in the cockpit. In ATR-72-600, the engine fire checklist is automatically displayed to the pilots. But if this fire was caused by an internal oil leak, there might not have been a fire warning. But the control in the tower would see the smoke and alert the pilots and also activate the alarm for the fire and rescue. To extinguish an engine fire, there are two bottles installed in the aircraft. They are filled with halotron, which is uh, more environmentally safe than uh, halon, as you used before. And they can be activated one bottle at a time if they have the fire indication. So what are we pilots trying to do? We have three different checklists for engine fire. Engine fire at takeoff, which means an action just after you're airborne. Engine fire in flight and engine fire on ground. And if you get an engine fire indication that you're still some distance away from the airport, you will do the engine fire in flight procedure. And this takes some time. You stop the engine, you pull a fire handle that will arm the uh, extinguishing agents. And if you still see the fire warning, you activate the first bottle, you wait 30 seconds, and if you still see the fire, activate the second bottle of uh, extinguisher. And then you have to prepare for a single engine approach. And all this takes some time. Uh, if you get the fire warning on final, you will continue and land. That's the best option. Because it's better to stay on the ground than having to fly around and, and uh, prepare a lot of things. Um, so you get the warning and we make the decision, okay, we continue. Pilot monitoring is a made a call to the tower, alerting them, they will alert the crash and rescue service. And we will also tell them we will intend to stop on the runway. We land, we stop the aircraft as quickly as possible, make sure we are facing into the wind. In this case, they had uh, wind slightly from uh, yeah, it almost pure headwind, so the wind direction was good. Um, we shut on the engines, activate the extinguisher if necessary, and the cabin crew is told to go to the station. Then the pilots will have to evaluate 
shall we evacuate or not? Because with an evacuation, there is a risk. Maybe a passenger when jumping out a uh, small emergency exit may have an injury, maybe to an ankle. So you have to assess this against this, against this risk. And, but as one passenger said, then they saw some smoke in the cabin and that will absolutely trigger an evacuation. So I think the crew did the correct thing here. And this is all we have for this time. I'm sure the investigators will find a cause for this uh, incident. Until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning.